Okay, I'd like to uh, convene the um, House Ways and Means uh, Committee. Uh, good morning to uh, everyone. Um, and uh, this meeting will be held in accordance with House Rule 10.01, which is uh, posted online. Um, we uh, have a quorum uh, present, and um, we will be um, covering uh, this morning um, six bills. Um, and uh, we do have a very uh, tight timeline, so I would ask uh, members on both sides of the aisle if they could uh, respect that. Um, as you know, the House is going to be convening at uh, 5, and uh, the committee reports have to be up there uh, uh, by 1 o'clock, and we do also have to provide time for the revisor's office uh, to prepare the uh, committee reports uh, before that. So uh, we do have a busy agenda, but uh, I think we can make, make it through. Um, much of uh, what we uh, will have uh, before us this morning has uh, been uh, before us uh, in the uh, past. So our first bill uh, this morning uh, will be uh, one that I'm uh, carrying. House File 14. So I would like to turn the uh, chair uh, over to our vice chair, uh, Representative Olson. Uh, thank you, Chair Carlson. So as mentioned, the first bill on the agenda is House File 14, which was referred directly to this committee yesterday. Um, so Chair Carlson, if you're ready, you can go ahead and, move and present your bill. Okay, um, Madam Chair, I'd move that uh, House File 14 be recommended to be placed on the general register. And um, I also uh, have um, an author's uh, amendment uh, as well. Um, so uh, I'll move the uh, 0817 um, amendment. Great, would you like to describe um, the amendment as the bill or should we attach the amendment and then do it as one? Basically uh, the amendment uh, members will be, uh, be the bill and um, this uh, is the Supplemental uh, Appropriations Bill, and uh, much of uh, what is included in the amendment was presented and discussed in the amendment to Senate File 47 in last month's special session that was adopted in Ways and Means. Uh, it reflects a number of the governor's supplemental budget requests, but the number came down from roughly $168 million uh, in last month's proposal to $58 million. Uh, that's before you, and it includes 58 million in offsets uh, in state agency funding to pay for it. So uh, the amendment uh, is balanced uh, in that regard. Um, in terms of the, um, the big picture and the appropriations, um, 7.2 million for the state patrol uh, for their patrolling of highways and 1.3 million for capital security um, and new is 4.6 million for the state patrol uh, costs dealing with uh, civil, rest, civil unrest uh, deployment. 13.8 million in TANF for uh, MFET uh, benefits. Um, that's uh, 25.3 million for direct care treatment through uh, DHS funded programs and 13.1 million for PCA attendance. Um, and there was a change in the uh, uh, compensation level, and Mr. Marks can uh, perhaps uh, comment on that if there are uh, questions. Uh, Three million for veterans suicide prevention and homeless prevention. Uh, Eleven point seven million for Department of Correction staffing overtime. Uh, Three point one million for the BCA sexual assault examination kits. One point four million for BCA crime lab. Also uh, new is 750,000 for the Department of Human Rights investigation in the Minneapolis uh, police. Um, and uh, also uh, then uh, in the bill is a uh, 58 million agency operation budget reduction offset um, in uh, new spending. And I know that's uh, something that or Mr. Franz, uh, Commissioner Franz has been uh, working on and uh, can comment uh, if there are questions about the uh, offset. Uh, we have uh, Representative uh, Moran's bill is included. Uh, that was uh, added uh, last month. It's the uh, 
foster care uh, background checks, and um, we uh, delay, we delay the establishment of the Public Employee Relations Board. Um, that language was included in House File uh, 108 in Special Session 1. And uh, the state uh, grant extension uh, language, uh, that's uh, a bill that Representative Nelson carried as a separate bill during the uh, first uh, special session. So uh, that's what's currently in the bill. Obviously, there are a number of things that uh, are not included uh, in the bill, um, being that we were at a uh, higher level of a special session one at the 168 uh, million. So um, with that, uh, Madam Chair, I would uh, be open to uh, questions uh, from uh, committee members. And I would ask either the uh, leads from the minority party or the uh, uh, chairs uh, if uh, there are questions uh, to feel free to chime in about their relative part of the budget and or language uh, in the bill. For example, there's rather uh, extensive uh, language on, on land purchases. Uh, we had that last time, um, I think if uh, Representative Nelson is, uh, or um, Hanson, excuse me, is uh, present or Representative Nelson about that section of the bill that he's dealing with, uh, they both can, uh, answer questions about that. Um, I don't think either of those areas was particularly controversial, but uh, if there are questions, they added, uh, at least with Hanson's uh, amendment uh, last time, quite a bit of language to the bill. So uh, with that, and then um, Madam Chair, when I'm done, um, I neglected one thing. I wanted uh, Mr. Marks to give us uh, a, a spreadsheet update on uh, a couple of the bills that are before us. So. Um, when we're done with this bill, perhaps we can revert back to uh, Mr. Marks while you're still in the chair. Okay. All right. Sounds good, Chair Carlson. So we do have some questions. So uh, Representative Scott. Um, thank, you, thank you, Madam Chair. And um, I had some questions on the Department of Corrections funding. Um, and let me get try to get to the bill here. I know we're in a hurry. Um, I've got the spreadsheet in front of me. Could, could you tell me in a little more detail, um, trying to find the, the language for that. Um, could you tell me in a little bit more detail about what those uh, that appropriation is for specifically? Chair well, Carlson. Yeah, uh, others can uh, chime in. The largest uh, amount there, if I recall, I think it's 9 million something. Uh, is uh, for uh, staffing and uh, overtime. Um, I think members have, are probably aware of some of the uh, problems that they have had. Uh, for example, at Stillwater, uh, uh, tracking and retaining uh, staff. So that would be uh, the largest single amount uh, in there. And we do have uh, Mr. Franz uh, present that uh, can perhaps uh, uh, I know he's been involved with these negotiations and can perhaps chime in uh, with uh, more detail if needed. Sure, uh, Madam Chair. Commissioner uh, Franz, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think the, uh, you know, we, this has been uh, a, a, an issue we've been working on for some time. And as you know, uh, we tried to uh, implement and did implement some hiring mechanisms to increase the, uh, the capacity and, and the number of officers there in, in our correctional facilities, but been unable to really get to the levels we would like. And so a big chunk of this uh, ask is for the overtime that goes with not being able to get the number of officers we would like. And so I think one of the keys here is to sort of to maintain a safe environment and, uh, and, and do this uh, payment for the overtime and staffing. Uh, th that's the, the biggest component too, as, as uh, Chair Carlson mentioned. Uh, I don't have the other details in front of me. I don't know if uh, Budget Director Ray Tan has any of the more details besides the overtime and staffing issues. Yeah, and um, by the way, uh, I might uh, chime in. I said roughly nine million. It's uh, actually uh, eleven million seven hundred and forty-two for the uh, overtime and staffing. Yes, the largest uh, part. So, strike my comment about nine million plus. But at any rate, it is the largest component there. Yes, Madam, Madam Chair. Uh, Representative Scott. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Is is uh, 
Commissioner Schnell on the call at all? I, I don't do. believe no. so, no. Okay, because my understanding is that um, the prison population is considerably down. It's down about 21%. Um, the figures that I was given um, say that uh, it's 2,069 fewer inmates today than we had 18 months ago. So it, I'm just wondering, you know, if this number of 11 point whatever million um, was based on the most recent numbers. And um, if somebody could get some clarification before we um, get this to the floor, I think that would be really helpful. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Franz or Ms. Rayton, I know was asked to comment if she's here too. Yeah, let me just, um, Madam Chair, uh, Representative, let me just say that yeah, th these numbers are based on the most recent uh, analysis at the Department of Corrections. I think one of the key things <clears throat> that we need to we need to note is that even though the numbers of the uh, inmate population may fluctuate and go down at times, part of the request we have in the bonding bill is to make some uh, ongoing uh, repairs and maintenance at the corrections facilities because these facilities are really old and they require uh, more supervision than they would if we were able to make some of these changes and uh, make some improvements to the uh, um, uh, security in, in some of the facilities. So uh, we're, we're boxing a little bit by the nature of the facilities that we have. We can only do so much. And so uh, the request here really is based on the most recent numbers, even though there is a, been a, a decline in the population, we still need this amount of money for staffing and overtime. But we can get you more information, Representative, on that too. Representative Scott. Uh, Madam uh, Chair. That, that, that sounds fine. Thank you. Uh, Rep uh, Chair Carlson. When uh, Representative Scott uh, mentioned uh, perhaps more information uh, when the bill uh, is on the floor uh, later, assuming it passes this morning, uh, I think we have to understand too that this bill is one that's a work in progress. So, uh, uh, there will be continued uh, work on some of the items in the bill as we uh, move forward. So uh, people can keep that in mind as well. So further discussion to the amendment. Give a minute for folks on the phone too, if they need to unmute. Okay, I'm not seeing any further discussion at this time. So if we could have everyone unmuted. And so in front of us, we have the A20-0817 amendment. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. No. The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. Is there any further discussion on the HF14 as amended? Seeing no further discussion, Chair Carlson, a few comments and then renew your motion. Yes, I would uh, uh, thank uh, members for uh, their consideration. The bill reflects the work and input from both House and Senate majority and minority parties and uh, the administration. Um, and I would uh, only point out, as I uh, said earlier, that uh, as the bill moves forward, it's a, a bill, it's a work in progress. So. Uh, Further discussion uh, when the bill hits the uh, floor, well, obviously it'll be uh, much in order depending on discussions through the next uh, few days. So with that, uh, Madam Chair, I would renew my motion that uh, House File 14 as amended be recommended to be placed on the general register. So the motion is before us. Uh, Ms. Sparkman, can you take the roll? Representative Carlson. Aye. Carlson, aye. Representative Olson. Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo. Representative Garofalo. Representative Albright. Representative Albright. Aye. Albright, aye. Representative Bernardi. Aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Davids. Yeah. 
Aye. Davids, aye. Representative Davney. Davney, aye. Davney, aye. Representative Driskowski. No. Driskowski, no. Representative Eklund. Representative Hamilton. Aye. Representative Hamilton, aye. Representative Hansen. Hansen, aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Houseman. Aye. Houseman, aye. Representative Hurtas. Hurtas, aye. Hurtas, aye. Representative Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Kresha. Representative Kresha. Representative Liebling. Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly. Lilly, aye. Lilly, aye. Representative Long. Aye. Long, aye. Representative Mariani. Excused. Uh, Representative Marquardt. Aye. Marquardt, aye. Representative Nelson. Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor. Noor, aye. Noor, aye. Representative Pulowski. Representative Pulowski. Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Poppy. Poppy, aye. Poppy, aye. Representative Schumacher, excused. Representative Scott. Aye. Scott, aye. Representative Torkelson. Torkelson, aye. Torkelson, aye. Representative Vogel. Vogel, aye. Vogel, aye. Representative Wagenius. Wagenius, aye. Wagenius, aye. Representative Garofalo. Representative Eklund. Eklund, aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Kresha. Kresha, aye. Kresha, aye. Representative Garofalo. That's uh, 25 ayes and one nay. Okay, on a vote of 25 to none, the motion prevails and House File 14 as amended is on its way to the House floor. Um, and with that, per Chair Carlson's uh, recommendation, we'll have uh, Mr. Marks talk a bit about the spreadsheet as the spreadsheets that are in front of us. So Mr. Marks. Um, Madam Chair and members, uh, uh, there was a spreadsheet for House File 14, which I believe you had. There was one other spreadsheet I wanted to reference and that one on the Ways and Means list is labeled uh, Fiscal Staff Spreadsheet uh, GF for general fund summary of house file 14 and house file three. And uh, this, this was just, this is an attempt to lay out uh, this, the uh, general fund effect of the supplemental appropriations or supplemental budget bill house file 14 that we just acted on and the, uh, the tax and capital budget proposals for house file three that we will be considering. And you can see the uh, lines one, two, three, uh, there show the spending items or the, the, uh, the totals for those uh, particular parts of the bill. Uh, in, in House File 3, there is also, or the amendment to House File 3, there's also a transfer from the premium security account of 100 million that's transferred into the general fund. So on line six, the changes in those bills, uh, there's a, uh, a net impact to the general fund of 51 million in 2021, 317 million in 22, 23. And then uh, lines eight through 13 lay out another change that 
uh, is not due to current legislation currently be cons being considered, but as the footnote uh, uh, there relays the, the FMAP or the, the matching money for federal matching money for medical assistance, uh, that rate uh, for the third quarter of the year or for the first quarter of the fiscal year for the July, August and September period has now increased uh, from 56 from 50 percent to 56.6 percent. In other words, the federal government is going to pay 6.6 uh, percent more of medical assistance for those uh, three months. Uh, that occurred because uh, the two factors that uh, that basically make that automatically happen. Uh, one is that uh, House File 105 in, in acted in the first special session, now it's Chapter 7 of Minnesota Laws, uh, uh, put a number, made, an, uh, made a number of uh, changes that, uh, that uh, allowed this to happen. And then the, other, the key, other key thing was that the U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services left an emergency declaration in place uh, after July 1st or into the third quarter of the calendar year. And that means that uh, this higher FMAP rate is in place for the full third quarter. So the numbers on lines eight through 13 show the effect of that. Uh, the line eight is the additional federal money. And then there are additional costs associated with it as well that are shown on lines nine through 12. The net effect of that, the FMAP change on line 13 is 83.3 million less of state spending in 2021 there's uh, almost 10 million of increased uh, state spending in 22, 23 associated with it. So, so line 15 is summarizing the changes in House File 14, House File 3, and the FMAP. So a net effect on the general fund there of 32 million less of uh, uh, net cost in, in 2021, 327, 328 million more in 22, 23. So that, that's uh, the perspective on that spreadsheet. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Marks. And Chair Carlson, are you, do you, do you want to take over at this point? Uh, I can, I guess. Uh, Representative Liebling has a question. Representative Liebling. Right. Thank you. And this uh, is for Mr. Marks. Um, no, Mr. Marks, I think oftentimes members misunderstand what FMAP is, and I appreciate your explanation here, but I just want to make sure that it's really clear uh, what we're doing, because, um, you know, I, I certainly don't have any concerns about using money that becomes available for whatever important purpose uh, members believe uh, it should be used for. But um, sometimes members believe that when we get uh, for the federal match for for Medicaid, or when it increases, or when the when we save money in Medicaid, even that somehow these dollars fall into a fund that then becomes available for other things. And I just would like you to clarify. Well, let me just state my understanding. You tell me if my understanding is correct, and that is that essentially what we're doing is this is general fund money. This is money that comes off the bottom line, essentially, because what happens when we get increased federal match, as we have here, is it reduces the state share. But it's not money that's sent to us in a, in a fund that can then be used for something else. It's really just reducing. It's saving us money on the bottom line because we need to spend less state money for these purposes for which the federal government is giving us a match. So I just want to make sure that's very clear as we appear to be using this extra extra money for, for some spending that um, members don't start to believe that now there's a fund here that is available that somehow is not interacting with the surplus or deficit. Could you um, maybe state that better than I have or tell me if I'm wrong? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chair and Representative Labeling, you're correct. This uh, and and that's the purpose of the separate lines on the spreadsheet. Uh, line eight is essentially 258, 259 million more of federal money coming into the state. In order for that to happen, the state has to spend the additional amounts that show up on lines nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Uh, the net effect is that the general fund. Uh, because the 
on line eight, the 258 million additional FMAP means the, the state spends that much less in medical assistance. It has to spend the other additional amount. So the net effect is that the general fund spends 83 million less uh, with all these changes. But yes, it's it's simply an interaction with the general fund and and this change is occurring without any additional law changes. Uh, the, uh, the changes in the, the bills we're currently discussing don't need to happen. This change is occurring because of what has already happened. All right, well, thank you very much. Representative Torkelson. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm backtracking a bit, but I realize uh, Mr. Marks is discussing both House File 3 and House File 14. House File 14 includes some spending from the Trunk Highway Fund, and I'd like Mr. Marks to uh, just briefly go over the impact of that on the Trunk Highway Fund. Mr. Marks, and we also have available uh, uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Margaret Anderson Kelleher, I think, is on if uh, she wants to chime in on that question as well. Mr. Marks. Mr. Chair and Representative Torkelson, I would just, I, I, it, it's lines one through three or two through four on the on this particular spreadsheet. And there are the three categories, the pa patrolling highways at 7.168 million, the uh, commercial vehicles at 648,000, and then uh, uh, to the state patrol for the civil direct, civil unrest deployment and a portion of that goes to public safety and a portion of that to the department of transportation but that's 4.6 million uh if uh, commissioner kelleher could comment more on the details of that if uh if you'd like i yeah uh, commissioner kelleher are you with us i am chair carlson i hope you can hear me so in uh as members may be aware, the Trunk Highway Fund is uh, by both uh, practice and law used for the uh, high state highway patrol as well as the Department of Transportation in the category of all things in supporting safety of our trunk highway system. So this is a, a, a continuation of the funding uh, partial. This is one of the ways that the state patrol is funded, a major way. And there is a two portions of this is my understanding and my work with DPS and certainly Commissioner Franz, if he has additional information, but is to both uh, provide a salary supplement to the state patrol, as well as uh, some needed funds in regard to the civil unrest from the Trunk Highway Fund that both uh, state patrol through DPS and the Department of Transportation incurred. And so that is why you're seeing this uh, in this bill. Thank you, Representative Torkelson, for the question. It will, I think Representative Torkelson's other part of his question is, it does make the trunk highway fund deficit uh, a bit larger by doing this action. And uh, both uh, MnDOT has been working on solving for that projected trunk highway fund deficit. Okay, Representative Torkelson. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess I'd also appreciate a better understanding of the impact on the on the state highway patrol itself, as far because we've been in uh, ongoing negotiations uh, on their salary, and uh, I don't think this impacts that directly. But I would like clarification on that, if possible. Uh, that may be a question for uh, Commissioner Franz. Yes. I think it is. Yes, it is. I, this is uh, Madam Chair and Representative. So this uh, this uh, additional amount is to cure the current um, salary situation. It does not uh, adjust the salaries going forward. So what we've tried to do here is respond to the needs of the Department of Public Safety, both through the general fund and in this particular case through the Trunk Highway Fund, to provide one of the things that happens uh, often is, is in 24-7 operations and emergency operations like the Department of Public Safety, we have situations where the uh, overtime and the deployment actually exceeds what we originally anticipated. So that's the situation here. So this is a, an ongoing uh, 
a, a budget problem that we feel the need to solve. We have been, as you may know, negotiating directly with the Minnesota Law Enforcement Assist uh, uh, Association and uh, have reached a tentative agreement with them and they are in the process of determining whether to vote for that uh, uh, tentative agreement or not. So this does not directly uh, adjust the salary in, uh, uh, increase through bargaining. Thank you. Uh, Representative Torkelson, was that it? Uh, just, a, just a concluding remark, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is an ongoing problem that we've been trying to deal with for quite some time. For those who are not familiar, we are we are losing trained state highway patrolmen to higher paying jobs uh, in other parts of the state because our salary schedule is inadequate. Uh, I think this current situation reveals how dependent we are on the state patrol when emergencies come up. Uh, we need to take a better look at this. I hope perhaps we can address it in a, in a better fashion, uh, even in this special session. I know the Senate's doing some work on that particular issue. Uh, I believe Mr. Franz might have an additional comment. I saw his up, uh, Commissioner Franz. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Chair and uh, or Mr. Chair, and thank you, uh, Representative. So one of the things that we've done is we agree the need to come to uh, uh, an agreement with the uh, our law enforcement friends and professionals. Uh, in addition to the uh, negotiation that we've been doing directly with the um, MLEA, we have also agreed and we'll be uh, selecting a vendor to do a compensation study this fall. One of the issues that we wanted to address, and we've done this in cooperation with the MLEA, is to select a vendor that would do a compensation study to compare the salary structure with uh, the troopers and other uh, law enforcement agencies around the state. And in addition, you may recall too, Representative, that there was a bill uh, provision passed in the last special session where the Office of uh, Legislative Auditor will also be doing a study. So we have proposed in a, um, uh, some language that would uh, allow those and give the MMB the authority to use those studies in our negotiations with the, uh, the, the MLE going forward, which I think would be helpful because as always, these situations are best based on fact and analysis. But I will say that uh, I don't uh, disagree that we need to make sure that we uh, provide the right uh, level of compensation. But I will say that the turnover rate in the, uh, uh, for the troopers, for example, is about 2%, which is the lowest uh, in any agency. And right now, 9% is sort of the average turnover rate. So we don't want to lose anybody. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that it's a it's, it's an issue like every uh, bargaining unit, and we want to make sure that we address these issues specifically, and we're working with the Senate on some language to uh, provide that these studies will be used in our negotiations going forward. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to recognize uh, Representative Hornstein, and uh, uh, then uh, I want to do um, or move forward to House File 3, which deals with uh, the bonding, or it is the bonding bill. So, uh, Representative Hornstein. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And I, I, have a I have a related question to Representative Torkelson's, but it does uh, it is much more focused on uh, House File Three and uh, some of the um, negotiations and uh, back and forth between the House and Senate on the Trunk Highway Fund, specifically as it relates to some new spending uh, for Trunk Highways. So, Mr. Chair, I don't know if this is the appropriate time to ask that question, or should we wait till uh, the specific discussion on House File Three? Uh, why don't we um, move forward to House File 3, um, being that uh, part of the discussion is relevant to, uh, to that, so we get uh, the capital investment bill before us. Um, as yeah, I mentioned, I'll hold off then, Mr. Chair. Yeah, if that's being that you referenced that, uh, that would be uh, my preference then. Um, so uh, let's go to uh, House File 3. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Marks. And... Um, Welcome, uh, Representative Murphy, to the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, and uh, Representative Olson, would you uh, care to move the bill? Sure. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that House File 3 be recommended to be placed on the General Register. Okay, the uh, motion is uh, before us, and uh, there is an amendment, uh, Representative Olson. Sure. I will also move the A20-0818 amendment for the author. Okay, that uh, motion uh, is uh, before us. Um, any uh, discussion on the amendment? Uh, Mr. Chair, I think there's a couple technical oh, amendments to that, that, that. Yeah. We should take those uh, technical amendments uh, first. Representative Olson. 
Uh, so there are two technical amendments to the A20 amendment that we should do for the author. And so that's the A4 amendment to the A20-0818. And uh, to Chair Murphy, perhaps. Okay, Representative Murphy. Mr. Chair, it's a technical, A4 is a technical amendment uh, that we caught in the review. Okay, any uh, discussion? Uh, seeing none, then all those in favor of the A4 uh, technical amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Representative Olson. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, before you move on, my apologies. I had my hand raised. I don't want to interrupt, but. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Um, being that we were on a technical amendment, uh, I forgot to look at the list. Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. What is the technical amendment? <coughs> Representative. Mr. Chair. Uh, Representative Murphy, he asked uh, what was the technical amendment that uh, we just yeah. voted on. Um, on page 74, after line 4, there's a final enactment date. Uh, this article is effective the day following final enactment. That was not in the bill and or in the amendment. Um, and then on page 45, line 23, um, there was a number, um, an incorrect number, 600,000 uh, should be 500,000. Representative Graffo, does that? Um, and Mr. Chairman, that, that amendment was coded A4. That's correct. And this is the A4 amendment to the A20-0818 amendment? That's correct. correct. Okay, thank you very much. Representative uh, Olson, does that take care of the uh, technical amendments? There's one more, Mr. Chair, that I believe it's the um, A5. So it's the A5 amendment to the A20-0818 amendment. I believe Representative Marquardt was going to move that and explain it. Okay. So, um, Representative Marquardt. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to move the A5 amendment to the A20-0818 um, amendment. Okay, the uh, motion is uh, before us, uh, Representative Markworth. So what that does is uh, clarifies that the short-term rental portion of this bill uh, does not include homestead property. So it adds one word, and that is non-homestead to clarify that. So that was the agreement between the House and the Senate. Uh, the administration is fine with that. I talked to Senator Chamberlain last night and he is fine with that. So that was the intent is not to include homestead properties and we need to include the word non-homestead to make sure uh, that part is clarified. So I, I would ask member support. Okay, the motion is uh, before us. Uh, Representative Garofalo. Your hand was still up. Oh, sorry, my bad. Okay, uh, any uh, discussion on the uh, Mark Ward Amendment? Okay, seeing none then, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, we now have, um, let's see, I'm just keeping track here of these amendments to the amendment. I think we're through the amendments to the amendment, are we not? Representative Murphy? I think we're yeah. ready. To Representative Carlson, this is Nancy. Yes, we have Repres another. Representative Knorr has an amendment to the amendment, but that is, I, I'm not sure that's considered technical. So I don't know if you want to let yeah, Representative Murphy do it now or later. We're trying to take care of the technical amendments. And so I think uh, we're done with the technical amendments. So um, we. Um, have adopted the technical amendments, or no, we have to adopt the Mark Court Amendment, or we did, we adopted the Mark Court Amendment. So now- um, And the DE3 amendment we have to adopt. Yes, or the, so as amended, yeah. A20. So, 
So uh, the DE3 amendment as amended is before us. Any discussion? Representative Carlson, this is Nancy again. I think it would be appropriate for Representative Murphy to explain what the amendment as amended is because Representative Knorr's amendment still is to the DE amendment. So you can't do the DE amendment until you dispose of Representative Knorr's. Okay, so um, Representative Murphy. Okay, we're talking about the delete everything amendment, which is A20818, which is um, a different vi version of uh, a conglomeration of bills that have been before you before. It is a jobs bill, a local projects bill, an emergency bill, and critical economic development legislation that had space in House File 2529, which we had, uh, which is in ways and means from 2019. And then there has been a 2020 version of 2529, which came before this committee in May and uh, did not pass out of committee. Um, or it, um, it did not pass the floor, I'm sorry. It did pass out of committee. Um, it's a bonding bill, but as I said, it is, a bill addressing immediate needs and emergencies in the state. It addresses local projects that we reviewed on um, 17 days of touring the state and meeting the people in their hometowns and listening to what the problems were in their regions and how they thought that their bills or their proposals of projects would strengthen the quality of life and Minnesota values in every single area of the state. This is, I don't know what edition of the spreadsheet uh, this is, it's up into the 50s. Um, we've been doing new proposals based on the things I've already mentioned by the needs and wants and emergencies of the people of the state of Minnesota. And we're trying this way of addressing those at this particular time. And uh, it will work and it will put Minnesotans to work. It will strengthen our regions and will address some emergencies. GeoPart came through um, an agreement with the House Republicans. Um, first of all, you have to understand that it was it started out as a committee bill, uh, the Capital Investment 2019-20 Committee. Then after that, and after we were sent home, we had a con we continued our work through this method, virtual meetings and um, negotiations. I had negotiations for over three weeks with Representative Erdogan, and we came to a conclusion, a tentative agreement took that agreement into negotiations with over three weeks with Senator Sinjum in the Senate. And we came out with an agreement for $1.275 billion of geo funds. That is this bill. Plus what was negotiated by with the four leaders with appropriation bonds, cash, and um, 
the other things that you see on the spreadsheet, which is um, dated to my, I believe, uh, 7-13-2020 at 12.02 p.m. And that's the spreadsheet that accompanies um, A20-0818. And that is what we have to decide on this morning. Okay, and uh, Representative uh, Murphy, we uh, do have one more amendment and that's uh, by Representative Knorr. Uh, if you're done, we'll take that amendment now. Representative Murphy? Yes, that's uh, fine. Okay, Representative uh, Noor, would you care to move your amendment? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to move uh, A3 amendment to A20-0818. Um, this is a small uh, amendment to uh, actually add homeownership as uh, uh, eligible uh, for the housing infrastructure bonds. Uh, we all know that uh, working families across the state um, need uh, stable, affordable, entry-level homes. Uh, we have significantly uh, underfunded uh, home ownership uh, at the state level. Uh, we all know that uh, the inequities that exist in our state when you look at home ownership across all sectors this is something that many people have asked us. We all know that home ownership means stable neighborhoods, stable schools, stable workforce. It also builds wealth. So we have to do the right thing to ensure that we don't exclude home ownership from the use of housing infrastructure bonds. So Mr. Chair, this is simply um, an addition to the uses of the housing infrastructure bonds which we haven't put any financial amount or anything. It's just allowing home ownership to be included. And uh, that's all we're doing. So I appreciate uh, if you will uh, support this amendment. Okay, any uh, discussion on the amendment? Representative. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Murphy. Representative Murphy. I don't, I don't know a whole lot about this amendment or where it came from, except that I know it's been in discussion in the housing committee um, off and on. The bonding people um, never discussed this and I wasn't aware of this amendment until late last night. And I haven't been able to talk to anybody about this amendment, so I would, um, like some suggested uh, information from the housing chair, uh, Representative Hausman, on whether this is an idea that is wanted. And should there be a limit or up to a certain amount um, for home ownership? Because as Representative Hausman had said, will probably tell us that although this is the highest amount that um, has ever been suggested for um, home infrastructure bonding for houses, um, $100 million is short of what the groups that were working on housing uh, they were asking for over $400 million rather than $100 million. And if we turn, if we add this home, um, this home purchasing in this hundred million, will all the money go for the, could all the money go for um, individual homes? rather than the kind of um, projects that she's talked about before this committee before, such as the rooming house idea where everyone in the area has a, um, 
a bedroom and a bathroom, but there's common places for kitchens and so forth. So how does this fit in with the plans that the housing committee has recommended that we consider? Mr. Chair. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Chair. I hear, I hear a voice. Uh, uh, Representative Hoffman. Yes. Um, yes, Representative, Representative Murphy has outlined all the complexity of this issue. Representative Noor did talk to me about this last night. Um, the, uh, we, of course, understand the argument exa is exactly right for the, um, the use of the, to, to expand this. We had always hoped that we would have um, 400 million instead of 100 million, making added uses easier. But the way Representative Noor um, uh, drafted his amendment, he doesn't name any dollar amount. So it means um, in this transition, perhaps nothing would happen this first year. He just puts it in as an eligible use, but no expectation about any particular dollar amount. So I think for now, um, it would be uh, an appropriate amendment to add uh, and, um, and doesn't, um, it doesn't compete with with other projects just because we don't we don't say they must do some homeownership. Okay, uh, we do have two others that have indicated that they want to uh, comment about the amendment. I assume uh, Representative Graffel is that on the amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. If I'm um, if we could just have nonpartisan. If we could have nonpartisan staff in the amendment, it references section 143 of the Internal Revenue Code. Can someone just provide a brief summary of what that means? I'm not sure who that would be directed to. Uh, is there someone uh, available uh, in the meeting that uh, could answer that question? Uh, Representative Graflo, I think maybe that's one that uh, we'll have to wait on. Uh, I don't see anybody uh, coming forward. Um, Representative uh, Draskowski. Mr. Chairman, if I could just follow up, my apologies. Um, so hey, I want to Graflo, make sure said we'd have to wait because we didn't have anybody online. But if you have further comment, go right ahead. Um, if perhaps Representative Hausman or the author of the amendment could explain what that portion of the amendment means. Again, I'm just looking at page one, lines 22. It says finance the construction or rehabilitation of single family homes. Houses that qualify for mortgage financing with the meaning of section 143 of the Internal Revenue Code. And so if perhaps Chairman Hausman or Representative Nork just, that seems to be the you know, a substantial portion of the amendment if there's someone who just at least talk to that. Uh, Representative Noor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, Representative uh, Graffel, I think this is in regards to the bonds, uh, for the mortgage bonds. So uh, I believe we do have uh, the, uh, the staff uh, from House Research uh, who can really uh, explain that whole uh, section. Um, I don't know if uh, Deb uh, is available to answer that question. Deb Dyson, sir. Um, Ms. Uh, Dyson. Um, Mr. Chair, Representative Noor, Representative Garofalo, um, I actually cannot explain. I don't know the um, IRC code um, or the Internal Revenue Code section reference. I'd have to look that up. So. Okay, so Mr. So, Mr. Chairman, what, I, what I'm assuming is that this is basically a language, this is language that would use MH, MHFA funds to encourage home ownership as opposed to the current structure of MHFA, which tends to put the thumb on the scale for uh, rental housing. Uh, assuming that is the intent of this language, then I'll be supporting it. Uh, if it turns out that this section 143 of the Internal Revenue Code references something else, then uh, of course, uh, that'll be, have a different meaning and should be subject to change later. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Skowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm trying to understand this amendment as well. It um, it appears that we're creating a new precedent here. Um, and we're we're creating a new qualification for the use of these monies. Um, uh, is there? Do we have any any precedent in law for um, taxpayers paying for uh, personal homes for people? 
Um, Representative uh, Houseman, uh, do you have any thoughts on that? As chair of the Housing Committee. Uh, this is a new area um, and uh, really um, it would have been, if we had had a traditional um, session, we would have probably had a hearing on this because this is, uh, there are a group of people who've been working on um, uh, establishing this new use for some time, um, but it, it, we really didn't ever, this would have been one of those bills that we would have heard in committee had we had a, a traditional um, session, which we did not. And so um, it, it hasn't gone through the, the normal process of um, conversation. Mr. Chair, yes. if I could, could I add, jump in on that question? Uh, Representative Liebling. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, actually, maybe I even ask Representative Marquardt to answer because taxpayers pay a ton of home ownership through mortgage interest deductions. This is uh, something that, it, it's like a hidden subsidy, but it's enormous. And um, so I don't know the merits of Representative Noor's bill. I'm not jumping in on that. This is kind of not my area, but you know, let's not, I, I just, that's just an amazing question to me from Representative Dreskowski, because yes, this is there's total precedent for this. I mean, uh, um, just it's just absolutely enormous, and so I think we, maybe part of where Representative Nora is coming from is that you know people who are not able to be in the housing market don't get to benefit from this enormous taxpayer subsidy, and they are left out. And this is part of why we have this enormous racial inequality. It's it's part of this inability to build wealth, which. Uh, we tend to think, oh, I'm a homeowner. I did it all myself. No, you didn't. You did it with enormous subsidies from the taxpayer. So uh, if I know that we have a uh, representative Marquardt has much more expertise. I don't know if he's prepared to speak to this, but I just couldn't help but throw that in. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, uh, just I might chime in to some degree. Uh, I'm old enough. Uh, my father was a World War II vet and uh, hmm. they're uh, were various uh, ways to help people uh, purchase a uh, home as part of uh, the benefits uh, of having served during World War II. Uh, special interest rates, uh, nothing down. Um, there were um, various options available to the uh, to the vets. Um, so, um, uh, Representative Skowski, you still have the floor. I don't know if that answers. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, well, I, it really doesn't. The discussion's interesting. And of course, I expected nothing less, Representative Liebling, to, than trying to uh, trying to equate this to uh, uh, to those deductions. Um, but uh, this is actually uh, uh, the government uh, taking taxpayer money from people and then uh, turning around, or in this case, borrowing money, um, and then taking taxpayer money to pay for that borrowed money. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, doing direct infusions of money to uh, selected uh, individual homeowners, the way it looks to me. I'm just curious, Mr. Chair, uh, maybe Representative Murphy has the answer as to whether this um, this amendment was part of the agreement with the Senate, um, because this is a significant uh, policy direction change uh, that I suspect the Senate might not be in concurrence with. Uh, Representative Murphy. Mr. Chair, I was not part of the agreement with the Senate and uh, we did not talk about housing at all with the Senate. We talked about geo bonds only. And um, this comes from house infrastructure bonding. And um, uh, appropriation bonds for housing. Um, I, I, uh, like I said, I didn't, I don't know about this. I didn't know about this at this time. And, uh, I think, um, if it goes on in this committee, then um, it could also come out on the floor if we find in sub subsequent days uh, where it's sitting and we get more input from 
people that know a lot more about housing than I do. Um, it could come out and I would hope that Representative Knorr um, would um, be willing to um, consider that at that time if we have a um, mass of advice on whether this should be part of the law or not. Mr. Chair. Um, I hear a voice. But, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, Draskowski. Representative Draskowski, okay. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Representative Murphy. Um, yeah, I, I think you're, I, I think you're onto something there. I, th I, I think the, I think the Senate will have um, large reservations with this. I don't know how large, but I suspect they'd be uh, large amongst their members. Um, uh, just wondering, or actually would like to request a roll call on the amendment, Mr. Chair. Thank you. A roll, roll call is requested. Um, Representative Dabney. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I want to thank Representative Noor for bringing this amendment forward and urge its adoption by members. Uh, Representative Liebling touched on uh, Representative Drazkowski's question about subsidizing home ownership, uh, but she, uh, while she was right, she wasn't uh, complete in how taxpayers subsidize home ownership. Uh, the mortgage interest deduction is is a significant. Uh, way that uh, homeowners benefit. Uh, we subsidize roads to new developments rather than asking those new home, home developments to pay for the cost of the new roads. We subsidize uh, water infrastructure to serve uh, those new developments rather than asking the developments and the homeowners there to pay the cost of their own water service. Um, we allow uh, every year mortgage owners to deduct the uh, real estate taxes or homeowners to de deduct the real estate taxes that they pay from their taxes. These are all ways that we uh, subsidize home ownership in the state through tax dollars. Uh, the chair was good enough to, to bring up the VA loan program after World War II. Uh, chair has a couple of miles on me, but uh, not as many as, uh, uh, not enough to not also have a father who was a World War II vet who uh, when he returned and married, my mother was able to get a VA loan for a nice little house in the suburbs. And I'd remind members that people of color were not allowed VA loans, even though they were veterans who had served this country as uh, admirably uh, as any of their white uh, peers in the military. So we have built a infrastructure in the state and nation that makes home ownership available to some, subsidized by all, and much more difficult to achieve by others. Uh, this uh, inclusion of home, home ownership as a possible use of these funds is an important part of ensuring that we have a spectrum of opportunities for uh, housing for uh, Minnesotans uh, across income and across race. We do have the largest gap in home, home ownership between uh, African-American community and the white community in the nation. Uh, and while these funds are not earmarked for any one racial or ethnic group, uh, I think making home ownership more available to people uh, benefits all of us and uh, hopefully can go to helping close that racial gap. I think any other uh, act on our part would uh, be very telling. With that, Representative Noor, thank you for the amendment and I urge its adoption. Thank you, Mr. Chair. What, what I'm going to do, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, <laughs> Mr. Chair, I, I, Mr. Chair, I don't know if you have, if you've seen my raise of hand. Uh, I haven't uh, seen your hand, but I was just, if I could complete my comments, I was going to say that uh, I'll, uh, I was going to ask the two relevant chairs to comment before we vote. But I do have Representative Hurtas and Mariani. Uh, with their hands up, and then I'll call on Representative Houseman and Representative uh, Murphy for uh, advice uh, to the um, to the committee, and then we're going to vote because we do have that uh, tight timeline. So people could be brief. Representative Hurtas. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, there's little to disagree with uh, regarding uh, Representative Noor's comments about uh, what home ownership does in terms of creating stable housing and stable communities, and it's it's good. Uh, this is an area that I've spent my life in, and there's been quite a few comments made just of recent that I just wanted to address. First of all, uh, yes, there are uh, those public policies that incent home ownership through mortgage interest deductions. We also uh, help people who are not homeowners with the property tax refund or the renter's credit uh, through our Minnesota system. We also have uh, comments made with regard to the development community. And I just want to make it categorically clear as a developer, no, uh, the streets are not subsidized when we plat and uh, create a neighborhood. They're paid completely for by the developer and de dedicated to the community uh, thereafter. Um, that is, of course, uh, built into the cost of a lot that the streets and the lateral infrastructure that is paid for by the developer is included in those lot prices. So, uh, yes, there are arterial roads, county roads, uh, collector streets and whatnot that sometimes need to be expanded as a result of development. But that is um, uh, simply, you know, not the case with regard to uh, the development community having their stuff subsidized. Furthermore, the infrastructure with regard to those homes are served by what are known as enterprise funds. That's your monthly water bill and your sewer bill. And those things are usually segregate from city budgets in that those are self-funding with regards to long-term maintenance. So that is uh, something that I, I wanted to bring up with regard to the issue of housing. And uh, we have had in the past, and I think we still continue, Rep Hausman probably is knowledgeable about this, but we have had programs for first time home buyer money, uh, which is helping people gain access to owning a home. And um, I think uh, just to close, uh, it's important when we're concerned about affordability and housing affordability that when we move forward <clears throat> as a legislature, we consider everything that we have endorsed or helped or, or supported with regard to the cost of housing legislatively. We continue to drive up the price of housing at the local level and even at the state level by issuing mandates of what must be included in the mousetrap, building a better mousetrap. And inherently, there's special interest that is always involved, whether it's uh, fire sprinklered homes or uh, air exchangers or the level of, of uh, codes that basically add more cost to the home. All of these things make a difference. And, uh, you know, things have changed a lot. Even since uh, 2000, uh, you could buy a lot in Brooklyn Park, for example, a second suburban ring in 2000, you could buy a lot for less than $50,000. Today, it's triple that. And so a lot of it has to do with the regulatory process. And we should all have our eyes open with regard to the cost of housing when we take up issues on the floor that uh, start to increase housing, because it doesn't just end with cost. It has to be return on investment. Then there is additional percent multipliers that go on in the closing transaction, whether it's mortgage registration tax, the deed tax, a uh, number of other factors, uh, sales commissions, all of it has a multiplier effect of driving up exponentially the price of housing. So things have changed a lot uh, during my career. Uh, I was selling homes in suburban Plymouth for complete for 89.9, you know, curb and gutter, city street. Uh, you couldn't buy a lot in Plymouth for under $200,000 today. So that's just the realities of the marketplace, but we should do better uh, in, to encourage home ownership. And I agree with uh, Mr. Noor that home ownership is uh, good for the community. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, again, I'm asking people to be brief. Um, it's not that uh, people aren't saying important things, but uh, uh, we do have a an agenda that's before us that's pretty ambitious. If I, if, if, I, if I could, Mr. Chair, I have some advice from the department that might uh, help us in the conversation right now. Uh, I was going to...
you uh, after Mariani, but if it's important right now, uh, Representative Hausman, I was going to ask. Yes. Um, wh while we have been in, in this conversation, I've been hearing from uh, Holmes for All and the department and, and the governor's office. Uh, the, the, the Ryan Baumtrog from the department uh, specifically called me to say there is something in the tax bill for this very purpose. And so uh, I suppose that's the dilemma with bringing an amendment um, to a, a negotiated agreement in committee. And Representative Noor, my advice to you, the, the department would like to work with you before we get this to the floor uh, to help you understand what's in the tax bill for this very purpose. So I don't know if, if you would be willing at, at this point to withdraw the amendment until the department has an opportunity to have a conversation with you about um, the tax bill. Representative Nor. Representative Nor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm willing to take that suggestion. Yeah. Right. The question, uh, Mr. Chair, I, um, I'll take that as um, way looking forward to ensuring that home ownership is included. Uh, and I know uh, this is an important issue. Uh, we cannot only be looking for those who are, you know, within the system, those who are well connected, those who can advocate themselves to get what they really want out of this. This is more about building uh, that inclusive uh, system. So if this is going to solve the problems that we're looking at, if this is going to provide the opportunity to so many people across the state, uh, yes, I'm willing to withdraw, but I'm, I can assure you that this is going to be a discussion uh, that we will continue to have. Um, I know many people see as a handout to people when we're, when we're talking about, uh, you know, in the, uh, big constructions, those who are within the system, we don't see that. You know, when we give people big tax deductions, we don't see that. But I think when we're trying to help the regular people on the main streets, uh, we tend to forget about them. Uh, and this is something we have seen repeatedly uh, over and over again. So with that, Mr. Chair, uh, I don't know if uh, Representative Mariani wanted to give some few inputs uh, uh, before I withdraw the amendment. Uh, I know he has been raising his hand, uh, but I just uh, I will entertain the request to withdraw at this point. Okay, uh, there's more than one hand that's up, but uh, if the amendment is withdrawn, I would just as soon move on. But I did reference uh, Representative Mariani before uh, Representative Hausman uh, spoke. Uh, uh, and then uh, we'll view that the amendment is no longer before us, but with the understanding that uh, there will be continued uh, work with the Housing Finance Agency and I think our two chairs and perhaps even with the discussions uh, relative to the bonding bill with the Senate. So um, with that, uh, Representative Mariani, are your comments still yes, necessary Mr. Being the amendments being withdrawn? Well, uh, Mr. Chair, I'll try to be brief. I, 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 I think what I heard from Representative Knorr is that he wanted to hear some comments that he would entertain withdrawing it, so we should get clarity from him. But let me just say very quickly, uh, the tax bill provision is a $4 million provision. Uh, Representative Knorr is looking for something much more meaningful, quite frankly, uh, than that. And, you know, if it turns out that that's the issue, we can always pull this off on, on, on the floor. But missing an opportunity here would, would not be good. Let me just say, you know, um, in addition to everything everybody talked about, breaking the cycle of the need for subsidized rental homes, because we're caught in that cycle, one way to do that is to get people into their own homes. And there actually are. Representative Juskowski's question. It actually was a good question. There are ways in which you can do that, which maintains the integrity of a public purpose for public bonds. One of the ways you do that, I know because I was the chief author back in the 90s on this, is through a land trust program, where the land upon which residence is held or, or, or resides or rests on uh, is held by a local public entity. That then would fulfill the, the, re, the appropriate requirements about public purpose uh, for bond. So the owner owns the residence uh, it, itself, has home ownership, obviously doesn't have as much equity as another owner, but we're talking about low-income folks able to get into their homes and not continuing to feed this you know, uh, expensive need to keep building you know, multi-unit uh, uh, units. The, the land that is coveted it over a very long period of time, I think typically 99 years, 
to be held in trust, so easily meets the public uh, uh, purpose. The point is, members, that there are creative ways in which this indeed can be done uh, without even all the other issues that, that we talked about that maintains a pure integrity of, of bonding for public uh, property itself. I think those are the kind of creative possibilities that Representative Noor is really urging and pushing you know, for our housing uh, pu public sector to really be about, uh, you know, there are GOP supporters uh, for, uh, for this provision. Um, uh, some of the advocates have had some very good conversations throughout uh, this session with majority leaders over in the Senate. So I wouldn't uh, automatically think that this is going to be a partisan issue at all. I think there's strong GOP interest, just as there is strong VFL interest in really trying to break the cycle of getting people into properties that they own, uh, at least the residencies, uh, as opposed to continuing to feed this, this very expensive multi-unit um, um, enterprise. We just need it, uh, but we should use every tool before us. So I would really encourage Representative Nor to go forward. Uh, with this amendment, if there's new stuff that arises, we can pull it off on the floor of the House. But if we pull it now, we're not going to have this conversation. Uh, Representative Nor, uh, I interpreted your earlier comments that you were withdrawing the amendment. Uh, Representative Mariani, at the beginning of his comments, asked for uh, clarity. Is the amendment withdrawn? Um, Mr. Chair, I think uh, that clarity was uh, presented by uh, Carlos Mariani. I said if we listen to him because he's been involved in this issue for a long, long time, I think I will, uh, you know, take that advice as we need to have the conversation. This amendment, I think for now, uh, I will uh, really uh, urge you to support it uh, so we can continue to have the conversation, look through the details, and if there's anything that presented, that we can actually uh, uh, address the home ownership, then that's a different discussion. I think at this point, uh, based on the conversations we're having uh, with Carlos uh, Mariani's input, let's have that uh, uh, in the bill and let's uh, look forward and I'm willing to withdraw it at a different time. Uh, uh, so let's vote on this amendment members and let's have that conversation uh, before the bill comes to the floor. Okay, members, uh I indicated at the beginning, we're on a very tight timeline. Uh, the House rule is that uh, the committee reports have to be filed by one o'clock. We're going into session at five. Uh, this amendment uh, we've spent a lot of uh, time on already and a number of hands have uh, gone up. Um, and uh, the amendment is not withdrawn. Uh, I did say that I would like to have final comments by the two relevant uh, chairs, um, Representative Murphy and uh, Representative Houseman, uh, before we, uh, we vote. Uh, are the hands that are up absolutely necessary to contribute to the dialogue considering our timeline? That would be Representative Garofalo, Keisha, Keisha and then I was going to represent, it, going to represent uh, Houseman. Uh, Representative Garofalo, if you've got comments, if you could be brief. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that we're interested in brevity, but I mean, these are DFL amendments that are being forward on, being brought forward on DFL bills and they're DFL members talking. So I hope you understand that I share your goal of getting things done in a hurry, but let's uh, make sure people are being allowed to talk. Um, in case yeah, I wasn't thinking about either side of the aisle, Representative Garofalo, I was just interested in the timeline. Representative Garofalo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in in case anyone participating in this uh, discussion cares about things like facts or data, uh, people should know that the home mortgage interest deduction, that's something that was relevant in the past. It's no longer relevant. Over 90% of American taxpayers now file with a standard deduction. So the itemized deductions uh, don't matter. Uh, the second point is, is that with all this discussion that's going on today, uh, these amendments are on a bill that does not have the prerequisite votes needed to pass on the House floor. So um, I heard people use the term um, negotiated agreement. Uh, I just want to wave my hands and remind the House DFL that there are non-DFL members in the House of Representatives and you need our votes to pass this bill and we're not voting for it because you continue to refuse to negotiate with us. So 
you can have these John Adams debating society talking points as long as you want, but you don't have the votes to pass this bill. And just a friendly reminder of that. Thank you. Representative Krishan. Uh Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I echo what Representative Garofalo said, and I would just bring up, Representative Nor, you have something here. Um, and in my short time at the legislature, I've learned you never go backwards, you always go forward. And I'm glad Representative Mariani stated his support that we should vote on this and keep it on because we can work on that at a later date. And I just want to make sure that we're absolutely clear that this amendment is going to be voted on. And Mr. Chair, if in fact, uh, and I, I do not believe Representative Nor is withdrawing it, but I want to make sure that we're clear. If that was withdrawn, I would support offering your amendment, Representative Nor, to keep it moving. But I believe it's moving, and I look forward to voting on that. He uh, clarified that uh, the amendment is still before us. He hasn't technically withdrawn it. So uh, uh, that's the situation. And uh, for uh, I would like to hear concluding comments uh, from the two relevant chairs, uh, Representative Houseman and then Representative Murphy, and then we'll vote. Representative Houseman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I've been getting a steady stream. If we were in a, um, a committee room, there would probably be some people coming uh, forward to the uh, testifier table uh, to make some clarifying comments because there's a lot of confusion over this uh, from the people who are listening. And, uh, and I'm getting uh, messages like, uh, FYI, land trusts are already in eligible use, the land anyway. So the dilemma with an amendment like this at this particular time, the timing is just uh, uh, wrong, but I, I, what I know uh, will happen after this meeting is Representative Noor will sit down with, um, with the department and others uh, to clarify um, what's intended here and, and how that will relate to what's in the tax bill. So um, it just a, a, always a, a confusing way to, um, <laughs> to, to add to a bill, I think. But just so that you know, there are a number of people who are um, observing some complications with it. Representative Murphy. I'm not on the committee, Mr. Chair, but if I was on the committee, I would vote yes. Okay, uh, you are the author of the bill, however, so uh, your input yes. is not... Uh, as, I said, as I said 20 minutes ago or so, that if it's on the bill and we find that it is not going to be workable. We can take it off when it comes to the floor. Okay, so uh, those are the uh, concluding comments. Uh, the clerk will take the roll. Representative Carlson? Aye. Carlson, aye. Representative Olson? Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo? Aye. Garofalo, aye. Representative Albright? Aye. Albright, aye. Representative Bernardi? She has her uh, thumbs up at aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Davids? Representative Davids? Aye. Davids, aye. aye. Representative Dabney? <laughs> Daphne, aye. Daphne, aye. Representative Dreskowski? No. Dreskowski, no. Representative Eklund? Eklund, aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hamilton? Hamilton, aye. Hamilton, Hamilton aye. Hamilton, aye. Representative Hansen? Hansen, aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hausman? Aye. Houseman, aye. Representative Hurtas. Hurtas, aye. Hurtas, aye. Representative Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Krisha. Krisha, aye. Krisha, aye. Representative Liebling. Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly. Lilly, aye. Lilly, aye. Representative Long? Aye. Long, aye. Representative Mariani? Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. Representative Marquardt? Marquardt, aye. Marquardt, aye. Representative Nelson? 
Aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor? Aye. Noor, aye. Representative Pulowski? Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Poppy? Representative Poppy? Poppy, aye. Poppy, aye. Representative Schumacher, excused. Representative Scott? Aye. Scott, aye. Representative Torkelson? Torkelson, aye. Torkelson, aye. Representative Vogel? Aye. Vogel, aye. Representative Waginius? Aye. Waginius, aye. 27 ayes, one nay. Okay, the motion uh, prevails. Uh, the amendment is adopted. Um, any uh, further discussion then on the uh, on the amendment as amended? Seeing none, then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Um, we uh, if we could have some concluding comments. Uh, we haven't heard much from Representative Marquardt yet. Uh, but uh, Representative Marquardt and Representative Murphy, if you'd care to comment uh, in conclusion about uh, the bill before we vote. Representative Marquardt. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, so uh, the, 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 I need a number. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairs. So uh, members, the tax portion of this amendment uh, does very much what the bonding portion of the bill does. It involves local projects and also provides uh, critical economic uh, investments and will boost a very fragile economy. And that's what uh, this tax portion of this amendment will do. Um, I'm gonna just briefly kind of go over the provisions, but the biggest part that has been agreed upon uh, between uh, the uh, Republican controlled Senate and a Democratic controlled House, uh, the biggest part is the full conformity to full section 179 expensing. And one of the things, the first bill we heard in tax committee this year in the House dealt with something that involves like-kind exchanges. Back in 2017, when the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act was passed by the federal government, they said on like-kind exchanges, that's where if you were to trade in a piece of equipment and buy a new one, that before the trade-in value, so if you bought a new tractor for $200,000 and traded in the old one for $100,000, before the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, you would not have to recognize that $100,000 that you got on the trade-in. Um, after that tax uh, bill, uh, now you had to recognize that. So you now have to recognize $100,000. Well, that started for tax years 2018. And so the federal government, they did full section 179 expensing. So uh, even though you had to recognize $100,000 gain, you also got to deduct and depreciate all in the first year of the $200,000. So you did not have an extra cost. In fact, you would see a benefit. Well, last year, uh, while well, we did a lot of things in conformity and did a lot of things in a tax bill, kind of one thing that was not kind of finished was full conformity to section 179. And so what happened this year is that farmers and small businesses saw the gain from the like-kind exchange, but because Minnesota only allowed a deduction of 20%, basically in the first year, the gain was greater than the depreciation or the deduction. And you found out that some small businesses and, and farmers got this bill for 2018 and 2019. They, they did what they thought was right under the um, current laws, but then because of the nonconformity, it created a problem. So this has been kind of the number one goal was to solve this this year. This bill solves that because what it does now is that on the like-kind exchanges, going backwards, the 2018 and 2019 tax years, you will have full section 179 conformity. 
So now for 2018 and 2019, small businesses and farmers will get the same treatment as they do now under federal law. So what this does, Section 179 will only apply retroactively 2018 and 2019 to the like kind exchanges. But moving forward, tax year 2020 and beyond, uh, full conformity to Section 179 will apply to all of those uh, purchases of equipment and so forth. And so uh, this will provide significant benefit to farmers and small businesses around the state. And this has been a number one goal uh, from a lot of members throughout, throughout the state is to get this Section 179 full conformity completed. And this bill uh, and this amendment will do that. And it's been many, many years where efforts have been tried to get this done. And we are now very close to being able to do that. So basically 90 million of the $99 million cost of this bill in this biennium is the conformity to section 179. Uh, so other areas of the bill I'll just go over kind of briefly is uh, there, the student loan credit now is refundable. This makes it refundable. So while the payments on those loans have been suspended, they're gonna come back. And with a slow economy, you got people who, if it's not refundable, they're not gonna get as much on this credit. By making it refundable, they will, even though they're not making much income because of the economy, this will really benefit uh, those students and other people paying those loans. Uh, there's also a reduction in the combined net receipts tax, and this is for uh, poll tabs, electronic poll tabs, and so forth. Uh, this will allow these organizations to have more money in their pocket to give out to uh, various uh, areas on contributions and various charities and so forth. Um, something that was talked about earlier is there is a $4 million transfer from the mortgage registry and deed tax, deed tax that would go into workforce and affordable housing. So the way that would work is um, there'd be a home, home ownership development account that would be established in the housing finance agency. And $4 million from that mortgage registry and deed tax would be transferred each year. And that would be for 10 years. So it's for workforce and affordable housing, and, for, and it would be for grants uh, and loans. Um, some of the other things in the bill is there's sales tax exemptions, refundable exemptions for public safety facilities. There's a number of those there. Uh, there's a proportion that would enhance school equalization aid on operating referendums that would get out to more lower tax-based uh, school districts. Uh, there's some fixes in the bill. Uh, a school fundraising fix that will uh, help uh, groups. Uh, the short-term rental, that was kind of a big one. What's agreed upon is that if you have a rental, now uh, four units or less than four units, and uh, you rent it for more than 14 days, uh, it would move into a 4B classification at 1.25%. Uh, um, the partnership question has been answered here. I know that's a little bit of inside baseball, but in 2015, the federal government uh, decided for the most part to start um, kind of auditing partnerships at the partnership level rather than just the partner level. And so this had, they, I think um, this is language that has been agreed to by all of the groups now, and uh, a lot of work was done on that. Uh, just a couple other, items in it. Um, there is a portion in here that uh, we have a property tax exemption for disabled veterans. If you're 100% disabled, you have a $300,000 exemption from property market value. If you're 70%, uh, it is $150,000. And what this allows is that a spouse uh, surviving spouse of a deceased veteran uh, would be able to make one move out of that current house as long as it's of less value. 
and still maintain the credit. Right now, a spouse of a deceased veteran maintains that, that credit, uh, but they have to stay in the house. This would allow them one transfer into another home of lesser value. And then there's also something that uh, some volunteer uh, drivers were being uh, taxed for reimbursements over a certain amount, and this would allow a subtraction for those folks. So that's um, kind of the main provisions in this bill, but it does address a major area, and this would be very beneficial uh, to our economy, right? When we need a real uh, boost, this would give our very fragile economy a boost with a lot of the provisions uh, that are in this bill. So I'm uh, open to any questions, Mr. Chair. Okay, and um, I'm going to, uh, there's two hands that are up and one I'm gonna rec recognize uh, represent Hornstein first. I don't think his question or comment is on the tax provision, but I asked him when uh, Mr. Marks was uh, doing his presentation to wait for this bill. So uh, thank you for waiting, uh, Representative Hornstein, uh, you have the floor. Well, thank you very much, um, Mr. Chair. And uh, as I referenced earlier, um, I did want to uh, raise an issue around uh, trunk highway bonds uh, in, in the bill. And uh, perhaps maybe the commissioner, I, I know that she was uh, on earlier, if she's still on, I, I would just have a question for her about it. Um, you know, my concern is that when we uh, originally passed uh, the bill, we had $100 million in trunk highway bonds. That's up to $300 million now. Uh, including 84 million for state highway uh, construction and then a new uh, project development fund at 25 million. And so my concern, Mr. Chair, is that um, while I'm pleased that at least these projects, my understanding, are shovel ready, I think the, the Senate bill originally did not have had trunk highway bonds for projects that were not even shovel ready, so we couldn't even get the construction going and create the jobs and all the things that, goals that we have in this bill for infrastructure. So at least that's positive. But my concern is that, um, uh, as Representative Torkelson had referenced earlier, uh, we do have some pressure on the trunk highway fund. And uh, it's kind of akin to a, a credit card uh, that we've maxed out on. And I think this will add some additional pressure to the fund. And, and I think without new revenue, we could really be facing some long-term problems here as we try to issue trunk highway bonds. So perhaps if the commissioner... Uh, could address that question, um, uh, I, I would appreciate it. Uh, Commissioner Kelleher, are you still with us? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Representative Hornstein. I'd be remiss if I didn't first say thank you to Chair Murphy and her staff for all the work that's been done on this bill already, and to the Senate members who have participated in the conversations around the bill. Chair Hornstein is correct, Mr. Chairman and members, that this bill does build pressure on the Trunk Highway Fund. To put it in context, there's over $623 million of funds that will go either to uh, local roads and bridges or to the Trunk Highway system. That is uh, a very good uh, thing in the bill. What it does do though, is it does increase the pressure on the Trunk Highway Fund. We have an internal debt policy that was uh, actually a legislative uh, directive a number of years ago to set a reasonable debt policy. It means that every when you're out buying your gasoline or buying your car, what happens is when that's deposited into the Trunk Highway Fund, MnDOT pays the debt service on any debt that is issued that's trunk highway debt. So it's a little different than the rest of this bill in the sense that MnDOT takes on that obligation. Our limit is 20% and that is deemed as our reasonable amount. This bill uh, with the additional uh, spending in the trunk highway fund will put us at 17.7% in the year in the fiscal year 2025 and so chair hornstein and i know that uh representative torkelson is also concerned about this that what that means is we do need to pay attention to sustainable transportation funding in the future 
to be able to relieve that debt pressure so that we can get to these important projects that many members have wanted. And Chair Hornstein is also correct. We have worked very hard uh, with Chair Murphy, with the Senate, to make sure that these projects are as shovel ready as possible. So they are out in your communities and getting the work done and putting people back to work. We also have an innovation in this bill, which is the Project Development Fund, which will also help MnDOT uh, be able to ready a number of important projects into the future that uh, can, uh, as we call it, the shelf of projects, be ready to go for a future funding. Thank you for the question. And Representative Bernstein. Yeah, and Mr. Chair, just to quickly conclude, and thank you, Commissioner, and I, I really appreciate your work, uh, particularly in, um, you know, making sure that a, the types of projects that are included are ones that will be available and ready to go. Uh, the original Senate bill did not have that. And so that's a, that's an improvement. And I also want to thank uh, Chair Murphy. Uh, uh, Chair Murphy has been very consistent on this. And, and I think she understands also uh, the, the concerns that we have about the, 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 the trunk highway fund. And, and I, I think that's why we had, I, I think, a more reasonable number in the original House bill. But uh, I understand why these uh, these numbers have gone up, and and I and, and I again appreciate the work of Chair Murphy and and, and Commissioner Anderson Kelleher, and uh, at least putting some guardrails on on this this new spending. So um, you know, with that, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to you know uh, have my concerns on the record, and uh, uh, again, since we do have some projects that are ready to go, create jobs, make a difference in communities. You know, I, I can support it, but um, I think we really have to be uh, very aware of the long-term impacts of of this kind of uh, trunk highway spending. Okay, thank you, Representative Hornstein. Uh, Representative Torkelson. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, number one, uh, House Republicans had zero input into the final negotiation of these trunk highway bonds, or the entire bill, for that matter. But I'm just going to focus on the trunk highway bonds because it's an area I'm very concerned about. Uh, and it's, I've had very little time to digest just what this agreement really means. Uh, and uh, this per particular fund that I have the first question about would be the project development fund. I don't know what that is. I don't know that we've had it in the past. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know how projects are going to be selected. Uh, it's, it raises a lot of questions in my mind, and I would like at least some clarification at this point. Um, if you expect any Republicans to vote for this bill, uh, we would appreciate at least understanding what the heck is in it. Um, Mr. Chair. Are you directing that question at the uh, commissioner? Mr. Chair, it's hard for me to direct a question when I have no idea what kind of an answer I expect and from whom I might get it. So I guess it's up to you, Mr. Chair but I suggest that perhaps the commissioner may be your best Well, choice. perhaps uh, that would be my take, uh, but I wasn't sure if you were directing it uh, in another direction. Uh, commissioner Keller? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, Representative Torkelson. So yes, this is uh, new language for a capital investment bill of a project development fund. These are projects that are not yet in our programmed four-year or 10-year program. Those are often referred to as the STIP and the CHIP, the State Transportation Investment Plan and the uh, Capital Highway Improvement Plan. The markers for how these projects will be selected is actually the MNSHIP program. Uh, that program is not uh, specific to project, but is categorical in nature. So it looks at things like economic uh, opportunity, economic development in an area as a way to identify those projects. And so it's tied back to MNSHIP, which is a statutory program, which both uh, helps us in terms of making sure that we are following and having conversations with communities on the trunk highway system. There is 25 million in that uh, line item. And what I would say about that is the project development costs on many of the projects that you all hear about that lots of times MnDOT tells you, uh, we are not ready to go on that project. 
needs usually somewhere between 12 and 15 percent uh, of the project into development work. That means environmental, that means readying the project uh, to get it ready to be shovel ready. That's been one of the debates I think we're all aware of with the Senate on transportation is the Senate has often been interested in uh, earmarking projects. This is not an earmark. This is a project development fund that will allow us to get a number of new projects ready to go to then uh, have them go through the processes that we need to do for a project. And I think members have a lot of needs out there. I know that from talking to many of the House members and many of the Senate members, these are all worthy projects. Uh, that I want to say, uh, but sometimes the projects are not ready. And in order to not tie up critical bond capacity, the Project Development Fund is an innovation to be able to develop those projects. Chair Torkelson or, or Representative Torkelson, I don't know if that helps. Mr. Chairman? Representative Torkelson? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner, for that uh, clarification, for lack of a better term. So uh, who's going to select these projects? You know, the, the bottom line here seems to be a legislative input is this supposed to be an answer to gaining legislative input uh, am i going to get a, my own little wish list where i can select some projects or uh, how is this going to work commissioner Mr. Chair and members, uh, you will be in the next, uh, uh, hopefully today, seeing a letter that will outline some of the examples of projects that could be funded through a project development fund and be able to be readied for shovel ready uh, construction into the future. Uh, many of those projects are at various points along even getting ready for development. So uh, an example is anything in the metropolitan area, we need to work with our partners at the Metropolitan Council to make sure that those projects are in uh, the transportation investment uh, plan of the Metropolitan Council. So a number, you'll see some listed that are not in that category yet. And we need to work with our partners at Met Council to do that. It does say, the language says that it is in consultation with the Commissioner of MMB and the Commissioner of Transportation, uh, currently myself, but certainly if this is uh, something that works as a program, that's going to go on into the future. So the Commissioner's Office would have uh, a role to play in the selection of those project development programs. Representative Torkelson. Well, Mr. Chair, I will try not to belabor this. Perhaps instead of calling it earmarking, we should call it ear piercing. I assume that's your concluding comment, uh, Representative Torkelson. Uh, Representative Hurtas. I think we're going Thank back. You, Mr. To Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was uh, wondering if, uh, after listening to uh, Representative Marquardt's presentation, if uh, Representative Davids could yield for a question. Uh, Representative Davids is uh, next on my list, but um, if you want to ask him a question now, fine. Representative Davids, are you live? I'm here. I'm here. Uh, I was going to recognize you next, next but uh, Representative Hurtas has a question of you. That's Thank wonderful. you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, Representative Davids. You've uh, been in the legislature um, among some of the most senior members. I've served eight years. I've served on tax committee when you were chair. Um, I don't recall ever seeing a tax bill or a tax provision being put into the bonding bill. Uh, doesn't have you had any experience in your years here that the tax bills are put into a bonding bill? I think this violates the single subject clause. Chair Davids. Representative. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do not recall that. Representative uh, Hurtas, that that's been done. And uh, when it comes to me for the questions, I'm going to be uh, asking House Research uh, if bonds could even be sold. Uh, since this is becoming a, a garbage bill by the second, um, I don't believe, I believe that a bonding bill has to be single subject and it cannot have uh, all these other issues involved. But uh, that's the question I'll be asking here too. I, have I seen it? I don't recall it, uh, but I think we know what's really going on here, but uh, we'll let it play out. 
Okay, uh, Representative Hurtas, does that uh, answer your question? Yeah, that did. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'll yield to uh, Chair Davids next. Okay, uh, Representative Davids, uh, maybe that maybe those were your comments, but did you have anything to add? Oh, I've got a lot to add. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Uh, first of all, clearly we're violating the single subject world. Could we have someone from House Research comment if we can sell bonds on a bonding bill that has been loaded up with uh, items that don't apply? Um, trying to think of who the best uh, source for that question would be. Um, anybody want to come forward from House Research or from our fiscal staff, nonpartisan? Mr. Chair, this is Colby with House Research. Representative Sullivan, or Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, I think to Representative David's question, ultimately bond council for the state of Minnesota will have to make a determination about the saleability of the bonds. Um, what comes to mind is the appropriation bonds that were issued to raise funding for the Minnesota Senate building. And those, that bond authorization, I believe, was included in the tax bill, the omnibus tax bill in 2014, maybe 2013. So that's the precedent that comes to mind, but ultimately, a bond council will need to make a determination. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Chairman, is there some way we can have them uh, notify us as members? I mean, not today, obviously, but if this can even be done. Well, I guess I guess we don't need to do that because this bill is not going to pass anyway, so it's really going to be a moot point. Uh, but I remember two years ago when uh, the Republicans were in control and we put some uh, issues together, and my good friends on uh, your side of the aisle had a cat saying that this is filing single subject rule, this is the mother of all garbage bills. I would have said probably the father of all garbage bills. Uh, but Members, it, this bill's not going anywhere. Uh, you don't have the votes to pass it. So uh, I don't know how long we belabor it, but a lot of problems with you're violating the single subject rule. Obviously, it's becoming a huge garbage bill. Uh, and I don't think you can sell the bonds with a bill that has all these unrelated issues in it. But I will be researching that. Well, I'm not going to research that issue because this bill's dead anyway. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, um, with that, um, somebody's voice. Mr. Chair, this is uh, Commissioner Franz. Okay, uh, Commissioner Franz. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Chair, Mr. Chair and uh, Representative. I think one of the keys that uh, we have checked with Council about uh, amending into uh, bonding bill different issues, I think one of the things that happened several years ago was a tax bill uh, that started out as a tax bill was the idea to amend into that a bonding bill provision. So the key legal question for a bonding bill to get authority to pass, it has to start as a bonding bill, which this bill did, and then um, uh, amendments can be made into a bonding bill. Uh, the, the critical thing is that this is a bonding bill uh, that we're adding to. And it's not another bill that we're adding bonding into. So that's one of the key ingredients to a uh, successful uh, bonding bill from that perspective. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, uh, I don't see any more hands up. And I indicated earlier I'm uh, going to ask uh, represent Mark Court and Murphy for concluding comments. And then some hands went up. And uh, uh, of course, I was going to recognize Represent Warrenstein anyway because he was on hold from before. But uh, with that, um, Representative Marquardt, uh, did that uh, conclude all of your comments relative to the tax provision? You want to put this in Samantha? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, that I'm completed with uh, basically the summary of the bill. But members, we are the only divided legislature in the nation. We have a Republican-controlled Senate and a Democratic-controlled House, and people around the state want to see us get the work done. And I think what has been accomplished here is we have an agreement in this divided legislature between a Republican controlled Senate and a Democratic controlled House uh, on a $1.85 billion capital investment bill. And we have an agreement between a Republican Senate and a Democratic House on a tax 
proportion or provisions in this bill that finally, after years and being a top priority and farm groups and business groups coming forward to say, solve the section 179 full expensing, we've done that. We have an agreement. And uh, this is what people around the state are looking for, not excuses, but to move forward with compromise, working together, bipartisan fashion. And that's what's been crafted here. And we have a great opportunity, and they don't always come together like this, to get some great investments done for our economy and for creating jobs and for our local units of, and for local projects, but also to do a number of things in the tax policy that we've tried to do for years and I know has been a top priority for a lot of members. And Section 179, full expensing, you talk to farmers, you talk to small businesses, they're looking for us to do this. And they don't want excuses. They wanted us to work together in a bipartisan fashion. And that's what's occurred here. And we have an excellent chance right now to really give our economy a boost in these very fragile economic times and also a way to benefit the quality of life for folks in every corner of the state. And we need that right now. So members, I, I ask that we pass this today out of ways and means and that we look beyond partisan politics and we look at this bipartisan agreement that's been reached and do what people not only expect us to do, but what people around the state of Minnesota deserve to get. And that's results that will help them uh, around the state as far as creating jobs and helping our economy and their quality of life. So uh, members, I, I ask for a yes vote on this. Okay, uh, thank, thank you, Representative Marquardt. And uh, I'll recognize now Representative Murphy and then we will uh, be voting on the bill. Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for committee members um, for the input that you've given today. This is a bill that came about because we listened to the people of Minnesota. We heard what the needs were and we received advice on what we should invest in to make life better for all Minnesotans, for every region of the state and every local project that's proposed. There is a strong bond of people that see a need. We have emergencies in this state. We have needs to put Minnesotans to work. We have to make critical economic investments in order to deliver on the people's expectations of what we can give them. One of the things that we hear the most about in our campaigns for re-election, in our reports to the people of what we've done, is investments in higher education. The University of Minnesota and the Minnesota state system is waiting for this bill for the investment in heaper and new buildings and renovations. We are at the highest amount that they have ever achieved. People talked about clean water, wastewater, recycling on every single tour we took. We have the highest investment in clean water and wastewater programs that help every part of the state. We have roads and bridges investment. We have two major, or a major bridge in St. Paul that's been put aside and put aside and put aside and put aside and put aside. 
we are funding it at $52 million. We have a dam in Northwest Minnesota. We are funding at $18 million. We are, cannot put some projects aside. Rail separations are killing, pe would kill people if there was an emergency. The investments for rail separations are high. We are saving lives if we invest in what the Minnesotan people have asked for. We can play politics if we want. But this is a bill that we should not pay, play politics on. We should meet the immediate needs of the people of this state, of the babies and the children and the teenagers and the young adults and the growing families and the senior citizens. All have something in this bill. This is an investment in Minnesota's future. Please vote. Thank you. Uh, the clerk will take the roll. Mr. Chair, should I renew the motion? Oh, excuse me. Yes, uh, you should renew the motion. I renew my motion that House File 3, as amended, be recommended to be placed on the general register. Any further discussion? Seeing none, the clerk will take the roll. Representative Carlson? Aye. Carlson, aye. Representative Olson? Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo? No. Garofalo, no. Representative Albright? No. Albright, no. Representative Bernardi? Aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Davids? No. Davids, no. Representative Daphne? Daphne, aye. Daphne, aye. Representative Driskowski? No. Driskowski, no. Representative Eklund? Aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hamilton? No. Hamilton, no. Representative Hansen? Hansen, aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hausman? Aye. Hausman, aye. Representative Hurtas? Hurtas, no. Hurtas, no. Representative Hornstein? Aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Kresha? Kresha, no. Kresha, no. Representative Liebling? Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly? Lilly, aye. Lilly, aye. Representative Long? Aye. Long, aye. Representative Mariani? Mariani, aye. Representative Marquardt? Marquardt, aye. Marquardt, aye. Representative Nelson? Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor? Aye. Noor, aye. Representative Pulowski? Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Poppy? Poppy, aye. Poppy, aye. Representative Schumacher, excused. Representative Scott? No. Scott, no. Representative Torkelson? Torkelson, no. Torkelson, no. Representative Vogel? Vogel, no. Vogel, no. Representative Wagenius? Aye. Wagenius, aye. 18 ayes, 10 nays. The uh, motion uh, prevails and the uh, bill is on its way to the House floor. So uh, thank you, uh, Representative Marquardt. Of course, you're a member of the committee, so you'll be here for the balance. But uh, thank you, uh, Representative Murphy, uh, the chief author. Um, thank you, members. Mr. Chair. And, uh, Mr. Franz, our uh, Commissioner Franz, uh, indicated he had an announcement i'm not going to i'm not sure if he's going to be here until the end or not uh commissioner franz did you want to do your announcement now or are you going to be here for the end of the meeting uh this would be perfect if i could thank you mr chair 
and just a short announcement about our bond sales. So as you, as most of you know, the state of Minnesota, uh, we, we have bond sales in August. This year, we proposed two bond sales in August, but those bond sales will be delayed if we don't finish our business here by July 20. Uh, so if we try to delay legislative action into, July, into August or September, it would delay our bond sales. So, you know, as a matter of past practice, the state of Minnesota sells general obligation bonds every August, and that's in order to raise cash for our ongoing infrastructure projects. Now, these projects were already passed in previous bond sales, but we need to assess every year the cash. And so that's why we go to market in August is to generate cash for these bonding projects. So this year we're planning two sales. One is for general obligation bonds for cash for ongoing infrastructure projects. And the other one is a bond sale to generate savings from the low interest rates. So it's a refinance. So we need to do both of these in August. We, uh, so if the legislature does not finish business and goes into August or September, we would have to delay those sales. You cannot have financial transactions changing your financial pages immediately before a bond sale or during the closing period. So I just want to work closely with you all and make sure that we're on the same page, that it's really important to keep these projects going. We need this cash. We need to sell these bonds. And uh, I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of any delay beyond July 20th really jeopardizes our sale, our projected sales in uh, August. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. We now uh, will take up House File 1 uh, by Representative Mariani, Police Reform and Accountability. Uh, Representative Mariani, would you like to make a motion? Mr. Chair, I would. I would move House File 1 be recommended to be placed on the general register. The uh, motion is uh, before us, if you would like to explain the bill. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think this can go rad, rather quickly. Uh, this language is the exact same language uh, that uh, this committee acted on uh, in the uh, last uh, special session uh, where we passed out, uh, forward uh, Senate File 104, Senate File 3, and Senate File 1, which were then subsequently uh, 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 put together on the floor of the House uh, in full action and then uh, sent to the Senate. Uh, this is a police accountability, uh, police reform bill, uh, which responds to the police brutality that killed uh, George Floyd on May 25th. It uh, has a rich number of proposals, uh, a strong set of proposals um, uh, that range over uh, a number of issues related to uh, reforming our systems, as well as uh, uh, direct uh, expressions of, of Minnesota uh, values. Um, and very quickly, uh, what they are are a, a prohibition of the use of chokeholds, a duty to intercede and report on the part of individual uh, peace officers, warrior training, prohibition, police residency, a uh, reform with the ban on local uh, control over residency decisions, uh, reform of the arbitration process. Um, the uh, strengthening of law enforcement citizen oversight councils, uh, a number of provisions uh, strengthening the licensing uh, processes at the uh, uh, Peace Officer Standards and Training Board. Uh, there's also uh, a number of provisions having to do with both prosecution uh, and investigation. So this uh, does have the language with the Attorney General uh, uh, nexus for the prosecution of police deadly use of force. Um, also an investigatory unit at the BCA, the, the independent unit, to investigate uh, those, those wrongful deaths. Um, there is a community-led public safety office and grant program uh, in this bill. There are a number of provisions related to uh, training for peace officers, focused on mental health and autism training. There is also uh, a, a effort to support peace officers uh, in, a peer-to-peer -peer counseling uh, program in order to deal with the effectively address the stresses that peace officers uh, endure as, as a uh, part of, of their work. Uh, there are also uh, there's also the store the vault uh, provision in here, the cash bail uh, provision uh, in here. Uh, in committee last or last session, we added the Indigenous Women's Task Force which simply just extended out the date by which they could use the appropriations that we made uh, last year. Um, there is a statute of limitations uh, lifting for wrongful death uh, lawsuits uh, at the hands of a peace officer. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, uh, 
we are negotiating these provisions. We have been uh, since the last uh, special session through the interim to this special. Uh, and even as we speak uh, right now, I was up at seven this morning having a conversation with our, uh, our majority leader and the other body, uh, along with the speaker of this body. And I can tell you that uh, the provisions that we're negotiating uh, are not all of these provisions. Uh, we are focused on the post board reform uh, issues, the duty, duty to intercede, the chokehold, the warrior training, residency reform, arbitration reform, um, uh, investigatory reform, and the training components of peer to peer counseling. So there's a number of issues that are off the table in all practical terms, uh, like the cash bail, the restore the vote, the attorney general, et cetera. Just giving you that for context. The cost uh, of this uh, entire package uh, before us, you all have uh, the spreadsheet is 22,680 um, uh, uh, in the remainder of this biennium, and then 44 uh, million uh, out in tails for the next biennium. What we're negotiating right now uh, is uh, 3,669 for the remainder of this year, or this biennium rather, and then uh, 6,958. Uh, for the next biennium. Obviously, we're not going to be voting on that. We're voting on the entire uh, package. But again, I'm just giving a context here. So the point here is not to uh, attempt to draft a bill that reflects all the changes that are uh, being negotiated back and forth, but just to continue with the same shell um, vehicle uh, that this body has already acted, uh, which then provides us with the uh, the uh, 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 the proposed legislation that would then formally allow us to continue to negotiate um, uh, with the Senate. So, Mr. Chair, with that, um, I, I would urge support uh, uh, from all members. So it's obviously a very important issue for us to address. It's one that, quite frankly, uh, impacts the life uh, and human rights uh, of human beings, as well as the quality of our uh, public safety system. And also, quite frankly, has a direct uh, impact on our economic well-being, as corporations are already reporting a difficulty in recruiting high-quality candidates uh, to their um, uh, organizations here in Minnesota uh, if they're attempting to draw from communities of color, frankly, because folks do not have confidence that this is a safe place if you're black or brown or Asian or, or, or some other uh, person of color. Uh, so, members, I would urge your support and uh, stand for any questions. Okay. Uh, in fact, on that, uh, those last few points that uh, you were making, uh, Representative Mariani, um, I'll reinforce and remind uh, the committee, as I said at the beginning, uh, much of what we would be doing today, uh, some of the issues uh, have been neg negotiated and agreed to. Other issues are still under negotiation. And... Uh, those negotiations are going to take place in the days ahead. So uh, one of our goals here today is to get the legislation up on the House floor so we're in a position to uh, adopt uh, the results of uh, those uh, final negotiations in the days ahead. So um, Representative Mariani, as you point out, this bill is a good example of that, as was the uh, first bill that was up uh, earlier and uh, the capital investment bill uh, discussions as we uh, no, are going to continue on that one as well. So, uh, any discussion on uh, the bill? Uh, Representative Garofalo. You're muted. There we go. You shouldn't have said anything. I just would have talked the whole time and you could have nodded your head and spared the pain of hearing my voice. Well, we enjoy hearing from you from time to time. Just time to time, though, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I am, uh, yes. uh, Mr. Chairman, Representative Mariani, uh, and you've mentioned that you've got ongoing negotiations in this matter. Uh, there are there are fiscal costs with this bill. Are is the way to pay for these things? Is that part of the negotiations as well? Representative Mariani, Mr. Chair, and uh, Representative uh, Garofalo, uh, the, the uh, Speaker and Majority Leader are having those conversations as we speak. Okay, so. Um, Mr. Chairman and Representative Mariani, by that, do you mean Speaker Hartman and Majority Leader Gazalka? Mr. Chair, Representative uh, Gazalka, uh, yes. And in fact, I can tell you that both bodies uh, have put issues on the table uh, for the negotiation that involve costs, both bodies. Okay. 
Mr. Chairman and Representative Mary, my, my chief concern, again, putting aside the individual items of this bill, is that um, that we are paying for things, and I haven't I haven't seen bills moving through our process. I'm not aware of any negotiations of how we're paying for this stuff. So that was the purpose of my question. Mr. Chairman and Representative Mariani, I'll be voting no on your bill today. Uh, the fiscal costs are one of them. Uh, but I do know that Representative Mariani, you and I have known each other a long time. Your heart is in the right place with this. You're trying to do the right thing. And uh, I do wish you good luck in comp uh, achieving compromise on this bill before the end of next week. So, but I'll be voting no today. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Representative Grafflow. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, uh, Representative Mariani, would you uh, care to renew your motion? Sure, I would renew my motion that House File 1 uh, be um, uh, placed on the, uh, be recommended to be placed on the General Register. Okay, the uh, motion is before us. Any further discussion? Ms. Barkman, you want to take the roll? Representative Carlson? Aye. Carlson, aye. Representative Olson? Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo? No. Garofalo, no. Representative Albright? No. Albright, no. Representative Bernardi? Aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Davids? No. Davids, no. Representative Davney? Davney, aye. Davney, aye. Representative Driskowski? No. Driskowski, no. Representative Eklund? Eklund, aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hamilton? No. Hamilton, no. Representative Hansen? Hansen, aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hausman? Aye. Hausman, aye. Representative Hurtas? Hurtas, no. Hurtas, no. Representative Hornstein? Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Krisha? Krisha, no. Krisha, no. Representative Liebling? Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly? Lilly, aye. Lilly, aye. Representative Long? Aye. Long, aye. Representative Mariani? Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. Representative Marquardt? Marquardt, no. Marquardt, no. Representative Nelson? Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor? Noor, aye. Noor, aye. Representative Pulowski? Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Poppy? Poppy, aye. Poppy, aye. Representative Schumacher, excused. Representative Scott? No. Scott, no. Representative Torkelson? Torkelson, no. Torkelson, no. Representative Vogel? No. Vogel, no. Representative Wagenius? Yes. Wagenius, aye. 17 ayes, 11 nays. Motion uh, prevails. Uh, the bill is on its way to the uh, House floor. Uh, thank you, Representative Mariani. Uh, <laughs> We now have um, uh, two bills by uh, Representative uh, Liebling, House File 35. Representative Liebling, would you care to make a motion? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that House File 35 be recommended to be placed on the general register. Okay, the motion is uh, before us. If you care to explain the bill, it deals with uh, dental providers, so. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is the bill that uh, uh, the Senate passed a very similar bill at the end of the last special session, and I have continued uh, working with Senator Benson. This is a, a product of our work together on an issue that has otherwise been overlooked during the pandemic, and that is that our Medicaid dental providers are having to buy PPE that is uh, in short supply, that is expensive, and that the rates we pay them uh, for their care of our Medicaid patients are really very low. So what this bill does is appropriates $5 million from the Coronavirus Relief Fund, and uh, through a formula, it uh, distributes that money um, up, to, up to $10 per visit with an MA patient 
to give the dentists an opportunity to, to cover the costs of their PPE that's uh, been so important in the pandemic. I mean, if you can imagine the exposure of dentists and hygienists and so on to the virus is tremendous because you know, when they're working in someone's mouth, um, so this is really critical. They can't do the work without it. We want to make sure our Medicaid patients continue. And uh, I, I don't know of um, any legislative opposition to this bill, um, so I would ask for your support. Okay, thank you. Representative Groffalo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Liebling, for bringing this bill forward. This is a good bill, and I would encourage members to support it. Thank you. Okay, uh, any further discussion? Representative Liebling, would you care to renew your motion? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I renew my motion that House File 35 be recommended to be placed on the general register. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, Ms. Parkman, would you take the roll? Representative Carlson? Aye. Carlson, aye. Representative Olson? Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo? Aye. Garofalo, aye. Representative Albright? Aye. Albright, aye. Representative Bernardi? Aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Davids? Aye. Davids, aye. Representative Davney? Davney, aye. Davney, aye. Representative Dreskowski? Aye. Dreskowski, aye. Representative Eklund? Representative Eklund. Eklund, aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hamilton. Hamilton, aye. Hamilton, aye. Representative Hansen. Hansen, aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hausman. Aye. Hausman, aye. Representative Hertos. Hertos, aye. Hertos, aye. Representative Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Kresha. Krisha, aye. Krisha, aye. Representative Liebling. Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly. Lilly, aye. Lilly, aye. Representative Long. Aye. Long, aye. Representative Mariani. Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. Representative Marquart. Marquart, aye. Marquart, aye. Representative Nelson. Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor. Noor, I. Noor, I. Representative Pulowski. Oh, no, I guess. Pulowski, I. Pulowski, I. Representative Poppy. Poppy, I. Poppy, I. Representative Schumacher, excused. Representative Scott. I. Scott, I. Representative Torkelson. Torkelson, I. Torkelson, I. Representative Vogel. I. Vogel, I. Representative Wiginius. Aye. Wiginius, aye. 28 ayes, zero nays. Okay, the uh, motion prevails. Okay. The uh, bill is on its way. Um, with that, uh, Representative Liebling, you have the uh, next bill as well, uh, House File 34, dealing with economic assistance uh, waiver extension. So, uh, Representative Liebling, would you care to make a motion? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I would move that House File 34 be placed on the general register. And uh, I can explain this briefly, Mr. Chair. So uh, yep. this is uh, last. I, if you'd care to explain the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we last special session, we passed House File 105, which extended some of the waivers that DHS had put in place during the pandemic. This is another one of those waivers. It was, uh, it, bottom line is it didn't get agreement in time to be included in that bill, but um, it is broadly supported, I understand. Uh, and in fact, I think that this was just, this already passed the Senate uh, yesterday, I believe, tacked on to another bill. So it's quite possible that House File 34 will be more in the nature of the vehicle bill because the language is already moving elsewhere. But um, it's, this is just a very simple waiver that allows the um, uh, counties 
to use remote interviews for people who are applying for the Minnesota Family Investment Program, although they, uh, they do need to have electronic signatures for enrollment verification, but it doesn't change any other standards for the program, anything like that. It's just uh, allowing during the pandemic for this remote interviewing to take place. Um, so that's it, Mr. Chair, unless there are any questions. Okay, any uh, discussion? Uh, Representative Graflo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Representative Labeling's bill is a good bill. It provides uh, more flexibility to our counties until the middle of next year. And I would encourage members to vote for it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any uh, further discussion? Representative uh, Liebling, would you care to renew your motion? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I remove my mo renew my motion that House Bill 34 be recommended to be placed on the general register. Okay, the uh, motion is before us. Any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, Ms. Parkman, would you take the, uh, the roll? Representative Carlson? Aye. Carlson, aye. Representative Olson? Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo? Aye. Garofalo, aye. Representative Albright? Aye. Albright, aye. Representative Bernardi? Aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Davids? Representative aye. David, Davids, aye. aye. Representative Daphne? Aye. Daphne, aye. Representative Driskowski? No. Driskowski, no. Representative Eklund? Eklund, aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hamilton? Hamilton, aye. Hamilton, aye. Representative Hansen? Hansen, aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hausman? Aye. Hausman, aye. Representative Hurtas? Hurtas, aye. Hurtas, aye. Representative Hornstein? Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Kresha? Kresha, aye. Kresha, aye. Representative Liebling? Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly? Lilly, aye. Lily, aye. Representative Long? Aye. Long, aye. Representative Mariani? Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. Representative Marquart? Marquart, aye. Marquart, aye. Representative Nelson? Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor? Noor, aye. Noor, aye. Representative Pulowski? Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Poppy? Poppy, aye. Poppy, aye. Representative Schumacher, excused. Representative Scott? Aye. Scott, aye. Representative Torkelson? Torkelson, aye. Torkelson, aye. Representative Vogel? Aye. Vogel, aye. Representative Wagenius? Aye. Wagenius, aye. 27 ayes, one nay. Okay, motion uh, prevails. The uh, bill is passed and will be placed on the uh, general register. Uh, so thank you, Representative Liebling. Uh, we now have House File 33 by Representative Cantrell, Disability Service Retainer, Payments and um, Other Grants. Let's see, Representative Olson, would you care to make a motion to put the bill before us? Yes, Mr. Chair. I move that House File 33 be recommended to be placed on the general register. Okay, the motion is uh, before us. Uh, the author also has an amendment, Representative Olson. Yes, I, Mr. Chair, I also move the A2 amendment for the author. Okay, the uh, A2 amendment is uh, before us. Uh, Representative Cantrell, if you'd uh, care to explain the amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, members of the committee, I appreciate the opportunity to present House File 33 before you today. Um, so the amendment uh, just uh, puts the bill in line with what was passed by the Senate yesterday. Um, so this is the byproduct of a lot of extensive negotiation and work uh, with our counterparts in the Senate. Um, and I'm uh, thankful to uh, Chair Liebling and uh, Chair Schultz for all their, uh, their work on this as well. Uh, this... Uh, what this amendment does essentially is, is, as I said, puts us in line with what the Senate passed, but 
Um, it creates a, um, a grant program to help to uh, stabilize uh, disability service providers in Minnesota who have been uh, affected by um, reduced, uh, reduced revenue from um, uh, being unable to provide services to folks with disabilities in Minnesota um, over the, uh, the course of the pandemic. Um, but then it also has a, has a public health grant portion as well um, that, uh, that will, will help to empower our disability service providers to adapt to the new way that, uh, or to the innovative way that services will have to be delivered for the foreseeable future um, to ensure that Minnesotans with disabilities are supported and that our disability service provider infrastructure uh, remains uh, as solvent as possible during this time. So with that, Mr. Chair, um, I will uh, take any questions. Okay, any uh, discussion of the amendment? Representative Graflo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Representative Cantrell. The, uh, the fund referenced here, this is the, these are the federal funds, correct? Representative Cantrell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Graflo, that is correct. Yeah, thank you. Okay, any uh, further discussion? Uh, on the amendment. Seeing none, um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, we now have the bill before us uh, as amended. Any further discussion? Representative Albright. Thank you, Madam, or Mr. Chair, um, and Representative Kentrell, thank you for bringing this bill forward. I know that this has been a difficult struggle for a lot of the disability uh, providers across the state. And so I would urge all members to vote green on this bill. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Representative Albright. Uh, any further discussion on the bill? As amended. Seeing none, uh, Representative Olson, would you yes, care to renew? Mr. Yeah, I renew my motion that House File 33, as amended, be recommended to be placed on the general register. Okay, the uh, motion uh, is before us. Any further discussion? Seeing none, um, Ms. Sparkman, would you take the roll? Representative Carlson? Aye. Carlson, aye. Representative Olson? Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo? Aye. Garofalo, aye. Representative Albright? Aye. Albright, aye. Representative Bernardi? Bernardi, aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Davids. Aye. Davids, aye. Aye. Representative Davney. Aye. Davney, aye. Representative Driskowski. Aye. Driskowski, aye. Representative Eklund. Eklund, aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hamilton. Hamilton, aye. Hamilton, aye. Representative Hansen. Hanson, aye. Hanson, aye. Representative Hausman. Aye. Hausman, aye. Representative Hurtas. Hurtas, aye. Hurtas, aye. Representative Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Kresha. Kresha, aye. Kresha, aye. Representative Liebling. Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly. Sorry, Lily, I. Lily, I. Representative Long. I. Long, I. Representative Mariani. Mariani, I. Mariani, I. Representative Marquardt. Marquardt, I. Marquardt, I. Representative Nelson. Nelson, I. Nelson, I. Representative Noor. Noor, I. Noor, I. Representative Pulowski. Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Poppy. Poppy, aye. Poppy, aye. Representative Schumacher, excused. Representative Scott. Aye. Scott, aye. Representative Torkelson. Torkelson, aye. Torkelson, aye. Representative Vogel. Aye. Vogel, aye. Representative Waginius. Aye. Waginius, aye. 28 ayes, zero nays. Okay, the uh, motion prevails and uh, the bill is on its way to the general uh, register. Thank you, Representative Cantrell. Thank you, Mr. Um, Chair, members. 
And uh, it's now uh, 10.33. My goal was to adjourn by 10.30 so that uh, everything could be done. You can't do much better than uh, three minutes overtime. So I would like to thank uh, everyone. We had a lot of people on uh, today, uh, members, uh, house staff, uh, commissioners. Uh, so really appreciate everybody's uh, involvement. And uh, with that, uh, meeting adjourned.